Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Dickity. Upper right hand corner, we have Darren C as the blue Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Shafir as the brown, Plotra, brown Protoss. Shafir is facing elimination. He lost a game one of the losers match. Whoever wins this will go on to the finale or final match. This is on Eclipse. And just, I'm going to give this kind of general thing. I am doing this. It's kind of a self-care thing. To kind of just stabilize my brain, give myself something else to ruminate on in the midst of all of this COVID craziness. I am recording this on April 27th, 2021. By the way, we are getting towards the end of all this. I have been fully vaccinated. A lot of people around me are starting to get fully vaccinated, which makes me very, very happy. But as things are closing out, guys, like as a country, as a world, we have all experienced a shared trauma. And I'm going to say there's just been immense amounts of stress in the midst of all that. And I think the best thing to do is to <laughs> just deal with all that stress, people. Uh, try to take care of yourself. Try to, uh, yeah, do a lot of self-care. And this is my version of it. I don't know what your version is. Sometimes I think just being a little bit busy is the way to do it. But I don't know. You do you is what I'm trying to say. Or not. You don't have to listen to me. Either way, I'm just trying to commentate games. Take care of myself. Gateway from both players looks like we are seeing at least initially a mirror build. This is one of those ramp maps. And honestly, every single time up to this stage where I have seen players go the two gate opener and try to opt for zealots on that initial build and play, it has not resulted in anything successful. Looks like we do see an assimilator being plopped down from Darren. We are seeing the two gate opener for Shafir. So I'm curious if this is gonna be it. So really what it's gonna come down to is how well does Shafir micro this? And can he press through this gate, get into Darren's base, and then will Darren have the wherewithal to kind of counter? Darren already putting, I like this. Just to try to counter this pro being able to get inside the base and be annoying and do some initial blockading, he actually engages and gets the kill. That is huge. That is absolutely enormous going up against a two gate. Because now the Zealots are not going to have a probe that might be able to do some... Because oftentimes, again, you can get that probe in that base that can oftentimes distract that initial Zealot that is trying to be in a defensive posture. Only a single probe on gas, by the way. But this probe is going to sit here, recharge shields, and you're not going to see that counter probe being able to sneak around and do a lot of annoyance otherwise. And Darren still has... Oh, I was about to say, he still has a scouting probe, but he's going to be able to see what was inside the base. The very, at the very least, he sees that initial zealot. We are seeing an assimilator plop down from Shafir as a follow-up, so I think he realizes the odds without that probe to provide some support harassment, the odds of him being able to breach this ramp are fairly low. In fact, he is abandoning that task altogether. He's going ahead and taking his zealot, bringing it back to home base. He's still going to produce two additional zealots, but it looks like he's going to get his Cybermex core up. This presents an opportunity for Darren, and he is plopping down his own gateway now that he has that cybernetics core up. He's moving out with his own scouting probe. He wants to kind of get a good look at what Shafir's up to. If Shafir is just going for, if he's applying any sort of pressure, he's going to see these three zealots incoming. Did he skip a Dragoon? I don't think he skipped a Dragoon. Okay, there's the Dragoon to follow. One Dragoon and two zealots usually beats three zealots. Probe is making its way back home. It's trying to do a little bit of delay blockade. That's also giving good timing. Pylon on the front, just in case. And Darren actually giving up some ramp positioning, interestingly enough. Perhaps he feels that the additional zealots will be out, that he's going to be able to counter this. And this Dragoon is very much out of position. He's just letting the zealots through. Oh, I see the plan. He's just going to let the zealots through, trap them on the gate, go ahead and try to kill three, and then try to follow this up with a counterattack of his own with his two gates. That's I like that play. And you can see Shafir desperately trying to get into the base. He is able to sneak in, but both of these zealots are wounded. There's only going to be a single Dragoon to take care of it. So a little bit of a misstep for Darren. So getting a bit greedy, and as a result, he might end up losing some probes. Two zealots towards the mineral line, one of them very unhealthy. The Dragoon trying to sneak through. More units now flooding their way forward with a probe. I think Shafir realizing the situation, if he doesn't get a lot of damage done here, if he doesn't continue this pressure and breach this gate, because of the difference in tech, he might end up losing it overall. But both those zealots are taken out. Two more, Dragoon, wow, two more Dragoons being produced. And keep in mind, Shafir got nothing out of that. I think he, I don't even know that he got a zealot kill. So now he has two zealots plus his gateway. He does have range upgrading, but range is going to finish very close to the same time that Darren's range is going to finish. And Darren has a flood of units making his way across the map. This is going to be tough for Shafir. He needs, honestly, at this stage, I'm wondering if it would be best to drop a shield battery just to try to stay alive in this match and have some miracle in the mid-game. 
But this is, in the meantime, two Dragoons, four Zealots. Shafir might be able to utilize that, that misfire up on the high ground to try to stay in this match. He is going to have closer uh, spawn position as far as support units. But there is a window, a really minor window here for Darren with just some luck to maybe reach the ramp. Otherwise, I think it might be best that he just holds back and denies this expansion and preserve his units. Instead, repositioning, he is going to start pressing forward. One Dragoon kind of morphing, oh man, moving its way out of the way. And that is going to be four Dragoons now versus three with three Zelts. So Shafir is going to hold. He's actually ahead because he managed to micro, uh, just sorry, managed to macro in the background very, very well in the midst of all this. And perhaps that's while the Zealots were inside Darren's base, he didn't quite keep up with his macro. So he's actually going to take the probe count lead. He's dropping a third gateway. Robotics facility is now up for Darren. And I think that's going to be the end of that attack. One thing for Shafir is he's going to feel a little bit more uncomfortable, I think, in the mid game, taking that expansion. I think with the robo, with the timing as it is, and all of the units that Darren has still been able to preserve, he still should be in a good position. The one trick of this here is I'm kind of curious about, I should actually look up single base probe saturation counts because Shafir is continuing to produce probes, which suggests that he wants to go for a quick natural expansion. So it's possible we're gonna see three gate into expand. But the difficulty in trying to execute that build is, is you need to pause Dragoon production and it almost makes that extra gateway kind of a waste. In, in that mid game, but he's continuing to saturate this base with probes. So it'll have probes to saturate a natural expansion that is gonna cut into his army production. And that's also gonna slow down other uh, pieces of tech. We do see that robotics facility being produced. We also see the robo and that upper end corner observatory is already up for Darren. So he's gonna initially go shuttle reaver just in case there is a quick counter attack that is gonna neutralize, assuming, you know, with micro, um, somewhat neutralize Shafir's additional gateway comparatively. One Reaver out in the field, especially with that shuttle able to micro um, against Dragoons in equal numbers, usually results in a win. And the Observer, after the fact, is going to give Darren a good look at everything that Shafir is up to. Shafir plopping his Nexus. So th here's the thing, though, is if Shafir engages this, doesn't lose any of his Dragoons, and is able to make Darren question his position in this map, he actually is going to take a significant economic lead positioning this because he has macroed all of his he, he has kept up with his macro. He's produced a lot of probes, and he will be able to saturate that natural expansion very rapidly and ahead. But now we see that engagement. Reaver's not in position. And I think Darren's a little bit outnumbered. Reaver now on the ramp. Nexus is building, so Darren needs to win this engagement. Reaver taking a couple free shots while it didn't have any scarabs. Pylon absorbing some of that misfire, and that shuttle taking some free damage. That Reaver very exposed. Shuttle's down, but Shafir's going to back off. And I think what this might result in is, so a tech lead for Darren, but an overall positional lead for Shafir economically. And we'll see if Shafir can turn that around into a win to stay in this overall match. He's actually plopped down a couple cannons. <clears throat> That's gonna be a little bit of, I don't know, economy sunk that you usually don't wanna sink. He's still trying to test this front line and he needs to be very careful doing it, particularly with that observer overhead, because that allows basically positional shots from that reaver. He has forced a shield battery from Darren comparatively. But Darren now feels safe inside his base. The question is, is what tech does he go from here? Shafir going ahead and getting his own robotics facility. He does have a forge and is upgrading weapons one. So it looks like he's sticking to more of a, of a just pure gateway composition. Darren still not making any motions. I guess he wants to wait until that Nexus is up. A big indicator is whether he'll take that second gas quickly. He has multiple options available to him. But I think what he wants to wait for is this observer. He wants to see exactly what he's up against before he makes any hardline decisions. But that gap in time might give Shafir windows. Citadel Vadoon plopping down, that weapons one is upgrading. So with all of those gateway units, all these Dragoons pumping initially, once that Citadel Vadoon's down, if he just starts pushing out Zealots, he might have a solid opportunity to take some map control and go from there. Two Reavers on the front, already two kills on that first Reaver. Shafir, again, I feel like this is a bit of a greedy play. He wants to push into this, maybe pick a Reaver off, and he might be able to do so. And that, you can see that he, look, oh, look at all that damage that that one Reaver shot did. And that immediately sends, I think even that one hit is gonna send Shafir back. 
he needs to be very careful because if there's an observer out in that position, I think that Darren might have even gotten a little bit more aggressive with that. We'll see. Citadel of Dune going for that speed upgrade. Two additional gateways. Sorry, three additional gateways going up to six gateways. And this might be Danger Town for Darren because he's just now adding his third and fourth gateway. And that is going to be a considerable difference in just pure tech. He's just now getting his assimilator. And honestly, I'm a little bit concerned that he doesn't have enough information to react to this. He's starting to move out, but he's going into superior Dragoon numbers with level 1 weapons upgrade. He is getting a speed shuttle himself, so he might be able to do some back-end drops, but here's the thing. He's not going to be able to drop into this natural or this main and be able to inflict really any punishment before Shafir is ready to, to make a move. Shafir also planning out here at that bottom right-hand corner, either, I think either staging to take his own expansion or keeping an eye otherwise. Observer under attack, both observers under attack, and this is going to actually cause a little bit of initial engagement with superior positioning for Darren. Both players regathering, and you can just see the numbers here. This is a superior, it's going to come down to Reaver Micro, I think. Darren dropping, moving into this army. Let's see the Reaver shots. The Reaver is hitting a good portion of that army, but the second Reaver is not even involved. And to win this fight, I feel like that Reaver needed to be involved much earlier. Shafir doing a pretty good job of target firing where he can. He has not picked off either Reaver, though, but you can see just plenty of Dragoon standing, plus a close reinforcement point. Now focusing on those Reavers. Nice scoop up there. And it looks like the Reavers are going to be enough with that standing army to clear everything out. And that, as a result, is going to give Darren... Wow. I gotta say, I think it was Shafir's lack of micro to go up and just punish that Reaver play has given Darren a huge lead now in the mid game. These Zealots are gonna get cleaned up. This is gonna give Darren map control. He will easily be able to deny a third. Yes, he's up six, six gateways to three, but if that is mostly, or sorry, six gateways to four, but if that is mostly produced in Zealots, as long as he keeps those two Reavers alive, that is not going to result in any additional map control. You can see the Zelts moving out and a cannon being placed because it's like, okay, Shafir realizing he is in Danger Town. Danger Town, population Shafir. Probe's still waiting there to maybe try to sneak an expansion. That would be one way Shafir would be able to make it back in this match. Is if he can sneak an expansion, hold back before Darren is able to really push anything or inflict any damage. Jagoon's pressing on this front, two Reavers plopping, and this might be a misstep from Darren. Darren being aggressive into, again, a closer reinforcement point and a lot of gateway units, but critically, Shafir is not be able to get past that initial Dragoon line and to attack that shuttle. So the Reavers stay alive. This is also going to give an opportunity for them to maybe sneak into this backfield, and I also should point this out, double forge. So this is going to be weapons to level one armor, which is going to provide opportunities. Sidestorm also upgrading. It's going to provide opportunities... Darren is still not taking additional expansion. He's plopped down a third Reaver. Just getting additional gateways. I don't see a forge for him anywhere. And I don't see any, any tech. So even though he got the lead in that army positioning, even though I would argue he's got a superior army on the ground, you can just see that in the upper right corner. Even though he's taking this 12 o'clock base, Shafir is certainly not out of this match. I love this positioning. Sensing that there might be a Reaver drop in the background. Planting it. Pylons, they're in position. Is he going to lose the shuttle? Oh, close. Just able to sneak out, and that would have been a disaster, honestly. But, with a follow-up, I think, yeah, Shafir might have an opportunity to either take his third, or go ahead and deny the third to Darren. The thing for Shafir is he has very little information. Actually, the thing for both players is they have very little information. Darren looking like he wants to go ahead and take that base. But he really does not know what his opponent's up to. They're both very much in the dark. I almost feel like this probe is mostly for scouting purposes. I think Shafir is, in fact, opting to go for an all-in attack to try to stop that third and take a third himself. He's going to have Templar. He's going to have Psystorm. This army is mostly out of position. He does have two shuttles. And this is a little bit scary for Darren because he doesn't see any of this. He's only got this probe in this bottom right-hand corner. He's just now moving this army out. And this army could cycle its way around if there are a High Templar at home and actually could go either way. This is going to be a critical moment in this match is who moves where and when. 
because Darren has he has gone ahead and taken that one o'clock. Shafir sees it now. This army for Darren looks like it's positioning to go ahead and be aggressive at the natural. This probe is going to get spotted and wiped out. So now Darren has a good idea of army positioning. Single observer moving up. I don't see any observer for Darren, so I'm not even sure that he knows he's spotted. And this gives a slight opportunity for some units to sneak around, perhaps, to stop that third base. Gateway count is up to six. We are at seven opposite side. I still don't see any High Templar. Oh, okay, sorry. Finally, some High Templar there at the 12 o'clock position. But I think this is going to be the critical moment. Does Darren move in time to engage this army before it takes out his third? Zealots on top of that initial cannon. There's nothing in place. Now that army pressing across. This is right on the probe transfer. Great timing. So some of these probes going to get peeled away. The shuttle's moving up. Zealots on the main. You can just see it's kind of... Uh, Kind of just waiting there down below. Some side storm underneath. I think Shafir had some units out of position, but they did manage to storm a lot. The Zealots moving forward. Still some more High Templar. The Reaver is really not engaging this fight until now, but I think between everything that Darren has, he might be able to clean up this fight. Will he be able to do that before that Nexus is taken out? Beautiful side storm on top of the Reavers and a huge amount of units that's taking one of the Reavers out. Shafir moving this army away. Psystrom on the ramp as it's clearing the way back down. It looks like they abandoned that Nexus. So Shafir trying to preserve his army rather than press things. So Darren defends. Dar Darren holds the 1 o'clock position. Shafir still has a sizable army supply lead. But Darren's Reavers just... They just sat there for such a long period of time. And Shafir, it seems like in many of these battles, critically has not been able to sneak up and take that army. But what he has managed to do, sneakily, while all of that engagement was happening, is go ahead and establish his 9 o'clock base. And it is fully mining. He's at 49 probes. And he has the overall supply lead. Darren finally saturating this 1 o'clock. And it looks like we might have another engagement. Here's the thing, though, is Shafir really hasn't been able to translate a lot of these... Ooh, I take it back! Bull shuttles down! And that was all of the Reavers for Darren. Great Psy Storm. Another good Psy Storm from Darren. Oh, these Psy Storms are brutal from Darren. So even though he has kind of a skeleton force, even though he does not have Reavers, he just landed a huge amount of Psy Storms. Needs to worry about his own High Templar, though, getting wiped out. Shafir still with a massive lead, though, and was still able to heal through that army critically because of his weapons upgrades. Level 2, level 1 army versus just level 1 weapons opposite side. So Shafir, finally I feel like getting a stronger position with his superior army count. And that is going to be GG from Darren realizing he cannot hold back the tide. Well played. Shafir staying alive. We'll move on to game 3 in the losers match. Between Darren and Shafir momentarily. <laughs> 